All right, so UI kits. Right here, I'm at figma.com forward slash community. If you click on UI kits, you'll see all of these here. There are just tons of them. And so what are the purpose of these? Well, obviously from the perspective of a designer who's looking for something like a UI kit, you're gonna use it uh, to help aid you in your designs. Um, you can see there are icon-based ones, there's uh, component-based ones like this like bike button, uh, micro interaction, mock-up kits, etc. cetera. Um, that's what, what this is about. Why would somebody create one of these though in the first place and make them freely available? Well, it's usually because if you check one of these out, I, even, I haven't even checked this out yet, um, you could see, if I just duplicate this, uh, there's a cover here and it's used for advertisement or just marketing in general. Love this component, check out this component and many more in my interactive design system file. That pretty much is the whole point. Uh, you wanna use this as a way for marketing. So if 100 people duplicate this particular uh, like button micro interaction, maybe one of them will hit you up for work. So this is the legwork that you have to do or you should do if you wanna maximize your earning potential as a freelance designer. So I'm gonna show you in this video how to create our very own, the methodology and the, the technical aspects of it, and then also how you publish it here as well so that you know, the, the, this is just a great way for self-promotion and marketing. All right, let's get started. Now, chances are, if you're watching this video, you probably want to be a better designer. And if that's the case, how much do you really want it? Because at designcourse.com, I've created a UI UX course that will help you go from designing layouts that I might rate a four or five up to eight and beyond. But more important than that, as a better designer, this means that you can land higher paying clients and jobs. This course includes over 16 hours of video, 40 interactive UI design tests, and even mentorship where I personally take a look at your work that you submit, I review it, and many times I also revise it, providing you with great feedback to help you become a better designer. Now, for this video, I want you to use the coupon code UI2022 and that will give you 22% off at checkout. All right, so here I am within a brand new Figma document. You also might be wondering why you don't see me. Well, I have limited time, so you don't get to see my face here in the left corner. <laughs> no big deal. Um, so what we want to do first, let's just go ahead and create a frame. Um, we'll just use desktop right here. Um, I'm also going to change the background here, something darker. There we go. All right, so the method or the idea behind creating a UI kit, you wanna make it niche, uh, unless you really wanna do something like a broad topic, that's gonna to be a lot more work, all right? So if you try to do something like um, a professional UI kit that has all the bells and whistles for everything, you know, every component imaginable, you could do that, but it's gonna take you a massive amount of time. So I advise to start off some, with something small, something that's quick and easy. So for instance, uh, you might have a designer who's looking to create a dog website, right? I, uh, or maybe a reptile website, or maybe a website for catering. So you wanna create a UI kit that is specific to that niche. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna do something that's specific, not necessarily to an industry, but more of uh, an idea. And so I really like the concept of synth wave or retro wave, uh, it's just a music genre. Um, and when it comes to synth wave, uh, it has this particular aesthetic. And so I thought it might be cool to create a few button components and maybe a card in this aesthetic. All right, so you never know, somebody might actually search for this and uh, you can literally lock, knock this out in one sitting and publish it and there you go, you have something that's gonna be there forever and can only help you, not hurt you. Okay, so uh, let's, oh, by the way, you can also put these in your portfolio as well. Um, so we're gonna start by making this um, kind of like a darker background because Synthwave is typically a darker aesthetic. And what we'll start off first is just to create a simple Synthwave looking button. All right, so um, what we'll do first is get some type. And so I'm gonna use uh, a font called BBoss, all right? Um, and so we're gonna type in first, just purchase, and let's make that bigger. All right, so that's around 30. Um, and then over here, we're gonna type in BBoss. All right, and then there's a few BBoss new pro, um, that way they're not all caps. We make this a little bit larger. We can go ahead then and take 
Uh, and by the way, I'm using the actual software, not the web-based version of Figma. Uh, that way I can use these types of fonts. Um, so what we could also do is take uh, this section and we'll make it all uppercase. Simple enough. And then we'll go ahead and take a rectangle, kind of wrap it around and we'll position it underneath. All right, and then we'll go ahead and take both of these and um, we'll style them first, I guess. Let's go ahead and get rid of this stroke and let's add, or a fill, let's add a stroke right here. And we're gonna take this and make this a linear gradient. So when it comes to synth waves, gradients are something that you'll find. So we're going to integrate that, of course. Um, and there's also, this color, I uh, like a purplish color, and we'll take the other one, drag that all the way up, and we'll put that right there at the same area, but we're gonna make it a little bit more into the red slash pink area. Look at that, I really like the look at that. So this is a strong synthwave aesthetic already. Um, now, what we wanna do though, when you're creating any type of UI kit, uh, you wanna set up things uh, in an intelligent manner, or some, some uh, <laughs> I mean, not in an intelligent manner, but in a way that people can easily edit it. And you do that by adding styles. Uh, so if you have a stroke, add it as a style right here. So we'll just say um, primary gradient. There we go. And we're gonna use that throughout. Um, for the type, we're not gonna add a gradient for the type. We will just uh, use probably this color right here. Oops, not that. There we go. And then we can also take that that type, um, uh, the color as well. We'll just put primary solid. So we'll come over here, add it, primary solid, and there we go. All right, so now we also wanna take this and we're going to click on auto layout, all right? And we're going to center it right there, this one, all right? So center that. And now if we move this around, it's gonna stay centered. This way, if somebody wants to copy this component real quick, which it's not a component yet, it will be though, they can easily uh, make adjustments. So you wanna make sure that your components are customizable and they use auto layout and all the correct alignment. Uh, so now what we'll do is we'll create an actual component out of this. And then we could also up here, click this to add a variant. So you should also be utilizing, for, especially for things like buttons or form elements, variants, all right? So variants allow you to uh, create interactions between them. So uh, let's say if somebody hovers over this, what's going to change, all right? Well, we could just make it, uh, we can make the type change, we can make the background change. Let's make both change. So what we'll do is we'll take our fill and we're gonna click plus we're going to grab the primary gradient and then we'll take the type and then we will add a new color for the solid. So we'll take this, maybe we'll just use the background of which it's sitting. And then we also wanna add that to a style. So we'll do I uh, primary solid dark, create the style and there we go. So now we go to prototype, we select our button, come down here, we'll choose while hovering and then we'll also, if you want, you can use Smart Animate. All right, 300 milliseconds seems like it'd be pretty fine. We go back and, oh, we, we don't have to go back because it's while hovering. So now if we just click, I, well, first let's get it on there. So we'll move this over here. We'll go to our assets, take that. And by the way, you wanna make sure uh, when we go here and we create our component name, We'll just name it button, there we go. So now, if we go ahead and play this prototype, you will see, ta-da, it works. All right, awesome, so at this point, I think you get the idea. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, a checkbox uh, as well as a radio button and then also a card. Now I'm going to speed this up just because I uh, probably don't wanna sit here watching me design this the entire time. Um, so let's go ahead and do that.
And all right, so there you go. I Obviously, you could do way more expand upon this, maybe add a text field, maybe it could just be specifically a, a, a form-based Synthwave UI kit. Um, but this here's a card as well, which I, I, is fun. Um, probably could use a little bit of work on that alignment. Um, again, I, it's really pay to understand how to use this section up here uh, when it comes to um, either hug or fill container, fixed width um, on the horizontal and vertical axis, but also auto layout and figuring out um, how you know you want things to behave based on responsiveness or when somebody scales something in and out. Um, but either way, this right here, we're gonna say is pretty much done uh, for the UI kit. Again, if this is a real scenario, I would be adding a lot more. I'll try to remember to make this file available. Maybe, maybe somebody can add to this and um, make it a lot better. All right, so now if you're ready to, uh, let's say for example, you're, you're happy with this, um, you come over here under pages and we create one um, called cover, all right? So um, for your cover, when whenever you decide to go ahead and share this, so if, if example, we click on share, you can see at the top, publish to community, all right? So if you click this, it's going to allow you to click publish, and it tells you thumbnail size right here, uh, 1920 uh, by 960, and there's a safe area of 1600 by 960. Uh, so what I would do is take 1920 by 960, a frame, all right, and come on, click it, there we go. Um, and I'll just left click here, 1920 by 960, all right. And again, we're working in our cover page. And actually that's really quite large, but either way, um, you know, we can take and now create a nice looking cover. I uh, may maybe use the same background color. Uh, maybe I'll put in synth wave real large and we'll take in our, um, let's see our primary color. Uh, let's, let's actually, are we able to do a, uh, yeah, we're able to do a linear. Let's go over here. There we go. And we'll make this really large, um, like 150. Synthwave, again, if I had more time, I would make this better, but I, you'll get the point. I don't want that, let's just do a solid, a solid white. Make this smaller, maybe like 80. Synthwave UI kit, maybe we'll take, um, let's just take all this back over to cover and you know what I'll do instead is, let's do this, uh, I'll take this, I'm just gonna screenshot it, delete that, now we have something real big, maybe we'll just like tilt this a little bit, we'll make sure it's inside of our frame, put this over here, Make this even larger. Maybe we'll also take our type over here. So if we go to page one, and by the way, we can just put the design or something like that. We can rename it. Let's take this type over here just to keep consistent. Make this type a lot larger. from the design course tutorial on creating UI kits for Figma. There we go. And there we go. All right, so um, now what we can do is go ahead and just put in share, um, publish to community, publish, and then we'll put in Synthwave UI kit, a simple UI kit with the Synthwave aesthetic. All right. Uh, tags. Here's where this is very important. This is going to help you get discovered. Synthwave, Retrowave. These are um, separated by 
uh, just commas and it will automatically create the keyword for you. Um, so synthwave, retrowave, um, sci-fi maybe, sci-fi, you get the idea. Um, electronic, we'll put EDM. All right. All right, so uh, we can also choose to show it as a file or a prototype. Uh, we'll just do file and creators, myself, yeah, 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 license. Um, that's fine as well, Creative Commons. Um, allow comments, that's fine, let's hit publish. Um, so connect or create a public community profile to publish. I don't have one, that sucks, all right? So I have to create a profile. Hopefully this is rather easy and painless. We'll just put at design course, it's available. Congratulations, awesome. So now, if I click view page, we're gonna make, wanna make sure that the, um, the cover is the first page uh, of this. So we wanna make sure we go back, click on the frame, uh, and just specify set as thumbnail. And then finally, uh, you have to republish it. So when you make a change, you can republish, click on publish community, and then last updated, just publish update, and it gives you all this stuff again. Let's hit publish. And then great, uh, we can hit done. Now we can just go back, we'll do a search for in the community synthwave, or one of the keywords that we specified. And there we go. Somebody will click on this, uh, they'll click duplicate, and awesome, awesome stuff. So here on this cover page is where you would put your link to your website, like your portfolio, or whatever it is that you're trying to to, uh, to to advertise, be that you know something that's a paid resource and this is just a trial, um, or just your portfolio for the purposes of trying to find clients. All right, everybody, hope you hopefully you found that interesting and useful. As always, make sure to subscribe and I will see you all later. Goodbye.